Hello, and welcome to another one of our installments in our Syntegration tutorial videos. Today we're going to be discussing how to set up a Dorbird door station with Control 4. Now we are assuming that you've already set up the Dorbird door station independently and that it is working correctly. Um, so to start the process in Control 4, we're going to go ahead and search Dorbird, go to the Dorbird door station and add it to our project. Once it's been added to our project, we can click on the Dorbird door station and we see here that we need the IP address, and the username and password for this step. To get the IP address, you're going to go ahead and go into your settings here in your Dorbird app. You're going to click Administration, and you'll see up in the top right corner here, we have Search. So if we click Search, give it a couple seconds here, you'll see that the IP address of the Dorbird pops up. So we do have our IP address now of our Dorbird, so we'll go ahead and enter that into the field here. and we're going to hit set. Now you're going to go ahead and check the required box and go ahead and enter the username and password. Um, this information can be found on the digital passport portion that comes with the doorbird in the box. Make sure that you are using the uh, user password and username and not the administration username and password. So we'll go ahead and enter our password in also here. You want to make sure to hit set on both of these. Once all of these three things have been set up, you're, go ahead, you're able to go ahead and test and make sure that it's working correctly. So if we go into camera test, hit get MJPEG URL and hit test, we will see here in a second that it has passed. And there it is. And then if we get snapshot URL and hit test, we will see again that that has passed. Um, if neither of these things pass, um, there's going to be a couple things that it could be. Your IP address could be incorrect. Your username and password could also be incorrect. Um, or if you have not pressed the actual doorbell button on the doorbird since it came out of the box, um, that could also be an issue too. So try one of those three things um, and come back and then retest, and then you should get a test passed here in the status message. Um, we can also see here if we click on the doorbird door station, and we go to MJPEG, we can see that that's working. And we can also see that the snapshot is working too. Make sure too that you go ahead and refresh your navigators at this point. Um, this is going to allow it to communicate with the Control 4 GUIs and it be available on the Control 4 GUI. The next step that we're going to go through to set this up um, is we're going to set up the doorbell motion and doorbell notifications. So the first step here is going to adjust this server communication port. Um, it does come defaulted out of the box at 8,991, um, which is sufficient for most homes. So you can leave this. Um, if your networking components do require it to be different, though, this is where you would adjust it. And then also the next portion is the relaxation timer. So again, defaulted out of the box at 20. Um, this should be left at 20, but if you do need to adjust this, you can. What this does is it's just the amount of time between the notifications. So as you can see here, we've got doorbell notification, motion notification, and door open notification. Um, currently, we just recommend enabling doorbell notification and door open notification. Um, by enabling motion notification, it can send quite a bit of information through because the motion detector picks up quite a bit. Um, so right now, just to keep it simplified and make it so you're not having any issues, just leave this disabled. Um, so to enable the doorbell notification and door open notification, you're going to come up to Actions here. You're going to enable doorbell notification and door open notification. So as you can see, those have been enabled. Again, do not enable the motion notification, uh, but it, it is enabled on our demo here. So once these have been enabled, um, you're going to need to actually set something up in programming um, or in the agents tab. So if we were to go into the agents tab first here and we go to announcements and let's say we add an announcement that's just Dorbird, you could add that announcement to play an audio wave file. Um, right now there's nothing in here but we could put the Dorbird wave file in here. We could save this announcement, come back out into programming and we would go to our actual doorbird, you'll see the doorbell button, motion detection door open. So we'll just leave it on the doorbell button so when the doorbell button is pushed, and then we would be able to come over here and actually take our announcement to execute that doorbird announcement. Um, and that would play that WAV file for you. 
or the other option is if you had let's say Sonos or something like that and you wanted to play through Sonos you would just again select Sonos over here and have it play the WAV file or whatever you wanted it to play when that uh, doorbell button was pressed. Um, so at this point that portion should be set up correctly. Now there's one more step that we need to go through uh, to finish setting up the doorbell, doorbird completely. So if we go back to our doorbird here um, we will see the SIP status here and it is currently disabled. Um, so this is going to need to be enabled um, for it to work with uh, touchscreen and the intercoming feature. Um, so what we're going to go ahead and do is the first step is going to be in the Doorbird app itself. You're going to go into administration. You're going to type in your username and password for your admin. So we're just going to use the uh, CAPTCHA here and capture the code. So as you can see, we've got our information in there. We're going to go ahead and hit continue. This will log you in as an administration. Um, you will see here, this user has already been set up. Obviously, it matches what we had previously um, with your username and password. If it does say user1, that's fine too. So we're going to click on that. We're going to come down to this comment here. As you can see, it's been changed to SIP. So this needs to be changed to SIP. It will have to say SIP in the comments, and then you will go up here and you will click Save. So once that portion has been done and it's been saved successfully, we can go ahead and go back to our Control 4 side of things, um, and we can go ahead and go through those steps here. Um, so the first thing to do is we're going to go back into the Agents here, um, and you're going to need to go into the Communication Agent. If you do not have the Communication Agent, you're going to go ahead and need to add that Communication Agent now, um, just by going up to Add here, adding Communication from the list. Um, so as you can see, we already have it, and we're going to create a new Communication Group, which is just going to be called Thorbert again, and hit OK. So once you've got the doorbird group in there, you're going to hit, go ahead and add the touch screen in, which I currently don't have one on this project, but you would see it here. You would add the touch screen in. It would become available in available devices. You would hit add. It would go over to your devices and group, and then you would save this, and then your doorbird group would be created. You're then going to go back out to your doorbird, um, and you will see still that the SIP status is disabled, so we'll go into actions. We're going to go ahead and enable SIP, and we're going to retrieve intercom groups. That's going to bring that group that we just created in the communication agents over. We'll go down. You can see SIP status is now enabled. We have our mic level and speaker levels, which are set at default. Um, these can also be changed and modified if you need. And as we can see, the call group now has Dorbert in it. So this is the actual group that links the communication agents, which is linking the touch screens to your actual Dorbert. We're going to hit set. So that will allow the call group to be called. And then once this portion has been completed, you're going to go back to your doorbird door station. This will actually say intercom. Um, you're going to rename this to something like doorbird. Um, it's probably the easiest. That is so if you do have multiple doorbirds in your system, you're not just seeing intercom, intercom, intercom. You'll actually see the individual doorbird names. Um, so this one will just be called doorbird. You're going to want to check use alternate camera. You're going to hit the doorbird here. Hit OK. So then you have the doorbird door station in here. Then you're going to go ahead and hit the custom buttons and activate both of those. Button one is going to be called door open. And button two is going to be called turn light on. So once all these things have been selected and changed, you can go ahead and refresh navigators. Um, and now your doorbell should be working with your touch screen or touch screens. Um, currently, keep in mind, you are only able to send two feeds to your touch screen, so it will only work up onto two touch screens. Um, this concludes our Syntegration tutorial video on how to set up a doorbird door station with Control 4.